there was something wrong with him. Something potent and dark. Or could it be that she had merely botched this spell horribly? She had pushed her limits this time, she had gone too far. But still, a tugging concern was forming, it was as real as the metal needles in her hand. Rosa tried to stand up on her feet, but she was exhausted. Her knees failed her, and she crumpled on the floor like a rag. I knew it. We must get to the bottom of this. Are you quite alright, my darling? Now you see it too. There is a sinister force at work. Get up. We have a lot of work to do. We must find out what he is and stop him. Rosa stared at the needles on her hand. Who are you really, Giller? Chapter 3 Portraits Candlelit Rosa entered the room with a tray of pastries and a pot of tea. Her duties were finished and she was allowed a bit of free time. She thought of accompanying Catherine for today's piano lesson. Kath, do you want some tea? The girl didn't look her way. She continued to chur churn out the bitter, melancholic sound from her piano. Rosa sighed, her shoulders slumped in defeat. She placed the food on the table. She sat on the stool beside the piano, twiddling her thumbs while her friend continued to stew in her foul mood. Is that a new composition? Catherine, uh, fucking. <laughs> it sounds nice. Nowadays you make a new piece every day. It's a shame they're all so sad. Catherine didn't reply to that, but when she spoke again, her words were bitter. I saw them again. Those degenerate louts, lo 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 whatever. No shame at all. Kath. Alright, consenting damn adults and all that. At least, at least have the decency to close the door. Sometimes I dare say that they would want to get caught. When I walked in on them this morning, eating each other's faces, they had this look on them. Like they were daring me to say something. Qua? Do they want me to applause? Very nice technique, sire. I very much like the way you swapped your spit with the <laughs> with my sister. Great ton action. <laughs> Tremabalich, whatever the fuck. And he even has the gall to speak to me? Be a dear and put them on the table, Catherine, He's, he, he even said. Like I am a soft-headed giggle mug of a maid. He wanted me to get annoyed, I just know it. Well, fight shall, I am. Catherine turned to, t to the tea and pastry, stuffing her buttered, buttered bread into her mouth. Easy there. These damn things. These damn delicious things. She said the last part angrily as she blamed her troubles on the looks on the food's relish. Rosa giggled in spite of herself. Catherine wiped her mouth in mock anger. What are you laughing at, wench? It's almost comical to watch you eat when you're angry, Kath. You're like the giant monsters that attack the defenseless towns in horror books. Oh yes? Catherine made sad tiny squeals and picked up another piece of bread. No, no, please spare us. She adjusted her voice and boomed out a roar. The Catherine monster of the deep doesn't show mercy to anyone. She dropped it in her mouth and chewed savagely. Yum, annihilation's delicious with tea. The two girls giggled. Catherine's rare smile turned into a rareful laugh. As soon Rose and soon Rosa felt her mood turning somber again. What happened anyway? Aren't you annoyed by it too? Sister had changed ever since she started helping in the chateau. Now it's all Gilurm this Gilurm dad. As if she wasn't already married. Ugh. She doesn't even care that people are talking behind her back. I'm tired of running around picking fights with the gossipers. She hasn't even visited home for a long time. Father misses her a lot. He always asks about her. Father had worked so hard all these years just to give us a comfortable, comfortable life. Now he is sick and all she cares about is that dastardly Marcus. Rosa shrugged. I am a little bit annoyed. But I guess I've gotten used to it. Their lives are their own, Kath. She didn't dare divulge more than, more than to Catherine. 
but it was partially true. I like Guillaume, he's a nice friend. But I love my sister. If they want to stay together, then why not fix this and have it at it? But what? Uh, but what irritates me to my damn snatch is the way they are with each other. Catherine recently found the use of expletives. Oh my god, I can't read. Catherine recently found the use of expletives and jeering in her speech. Rosa hoped it was a face. They are miserable. They are miserable. Any half-wit can see that. Yes. I've told Emily time and again to smarten up. She's hurting a lot of people, including herself. But if she would listen to her 16-year-old bad of a sister, hmm? Even Guillermo is depressed, I can tell. Remember when he used to come and visit us here to have tea? Or when he, we used to have picnics in the afternoon? We used to run around chasing rodents in the garden. You ran around. <laughs> we just watched you get dirty, actually. That is very true, you nitheads. Back then, he used to be fun visiting the chateau. Nowadays, we barely even see him. He just stays in his bureau bura, all day, <laughs> brooding, brooding. Is it something adults subject themselves to, like a torture ritual? I really don't understand why two people who are clearly unhappy keep at it. Rosette did understand. At least, some part of her did. She couldn't exactly explain how pain and love worked. All she knew was that it had something to do with an absurd, obsessive amount of hope. She felt Mother tugging at her mind. She loved Mother so much. Living with the Paris gave her an ample compassion, comparison to her former life. She had finally accepted that Mother was cruel. And yet, Mother still gave her love and kept her from want... From wanting? Okay, and kept her from wanting. Was that crazy? Perhaps it was the only love she needed. Why did she have such a horrible haircut? I just noticed. Look, why? God damn it. Perhaps it was what... <laughs> Perhaps it was what she deserved. Rosa shook the thoughts of her mind and just shrugged. I know you are just worried about your sister, Kath, but they will figure it out. Humans learn. <clears throat> Look at you, all profound and such. You read any good books lately? Just the... In just the... Uh, just the riveting... Uh, just the riveting account of the ugly duckling and blah blah black sheep. Ah, oh, the classics. I don't know how you put up with it, though. I hate reading words. In order to write, I have to learn how to read first. I want to write. Why would you want to do a dastardly thing like writing? Why would you want to hit some crazy strings until you f your fingers bleed? The two friends laughed again. I want to remember things. I want to write them down. But most of all, I want to feel the way you do when you play the piano, Cat. Oh? The way you look when you play, you are passion. You are passion and bliss in music form. It feels like love, like magic. You inspire me to do something fulfilling and grand. Well, I'm sure you will. Hey, why not write a play one day? Oh, let's do it. You write an amazing play, and I shall provide the music. We'll travel around the country and perform. We'll make lots and lots of money and gain lots of followers. We shall be known as... The Pahid Parade Car Caravan of Wonders. Pahid Parade? Are you sure? Puns are the best. Trust me, I hate puns. That sounds darn batty, Kathy. Ugh. From the day forward, nobody's allowed to call me Kathy ever again. The sound of a knock interrupted your giggles. Catherine, it's me. I need to discuss something important with you. Frustrated, Catherine pouted at the sound of, of her sister's voice. She turned back to her piano and began to pound a sarcastically happy tone. Rosa stood up to open the door. Hello, Rosa. Madame. She had seen little of the older Pahit sister recently, and it's 
stun a staunch a s uh 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 a staunch her how old she had began to look. Her once radiant face looked tired and harrowed, almost crone like, under her eyes hung huge bags. And yet she still looked quite dignified, full of pride and pomp. There was an extra rouge on her skin, and her demean demeanor was elegant. And it was as if pride was her only source of nourishment these days. Do you mind giving Catherine and me a moment of privacy? Rosa gave a small bow. Of course not, madame. Rosa gathered her nursery books and squeezed Catherine's shoulder before stepping out of the room. Rosa entered the quiet room in the library. She was about to approach the table when she noticed Guillem already occupying a seat. He was writing something in a book, somewhat immersed in the activity. Rosa stopped dead in her tracks.